It's time for another girl's shopping trip to the thrift store. I'm so excited. Today we have our friend Leslie. She is so much fun. You guys are gonna love her. And then of course, we've got Natalie Hi. from Design to the Nines. So we are gonna head to a thrift store that I've actually never been to before. So I'm excited to browse around and see what we find. So let's hit the road. Okay, we are here at the thrift store. And if you tuned in last time, we are gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm going to recap. What we're gonna do is go inside the store. Natalie and Leslie are going to find a home decor item that they want me to make over. So last- I'm not gonna go as easy as I did last time. She was really nice last time. So I'm hoping that you'll be nice again. We'll see. But are you up for it? I am not nice, but yes, this will be so fun. But but I know that you, whatever I choose, you'll do something. Oh, that's true. She's that's so true. Nice. That's true. All right, you ready to go shopping? Let's go. Okay, let's go. I just saw the girls down the aisle and I don't think they're gonna be as nice to me as they were last time. Things are looking rough. I think they're finding some items. Ooh, I hope that's not it. Okay, you guys, did you get your items? I feel like I went a little harder on you this time. Okay. So I still am confident in you. What do you think, Leslie? Hers is uh, the hardest. Yeah, it's gonna be hard, but I think oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm a little nervous. Okay, let's go home and unwrap them. What a fun girls shopping trip. I love these two ladies so much. And hopefully by the time I open up these mystery items, I'll still have a lot of love in my heart for them. So let's go ahead and see what Leslie got me. I have a feeling I already know what this is because I was peeking through the shelves. Remember that? So let's see if I'm right. Oh, mm-hmm. Yep, that's what I thought. This beautiful mustard lamp <laughs> well uh we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do with this this is not actually that bad i like the shape of it so i'm sure we could figure out something amazing with this okay leslie you were not easy on me but i'm up for a challenge so let's take a closer look at this lamp we're gonna start off with the color this mustard yellow is not doing it any favors the dark brown on the top and bottom adds a wonky color combination. There are plenty of scuffs and scratches all over this lamp. And I flipped it over and on the bottom there was some duct tape holding the electrical together. Now I'm no electrician but I'm pretty sure that duct tape is frowned upon. So we've got to deal with that as well. All right, we've got a lot of work to do, so let's start off by disassembling this lamp. I turned it on its side, pulled off the duct tape, and there was another weird electrical wire underneath, which I removed, and then I got my needle nose pliers and cut the cord. Then I removed the nut from the bottom and twisted the top off and pulled out the metal center. Now the shape of this lamp is actually really nice. I love the size and the curves are very classic and streamlined. It has a lot of potential. So firstly, let's go ahead and get rid of this mustard yellow color. We're going to take this lamp outside and spray it in some Krylon white gloss spray paint. I sprayed a thorough coat on this lamp I wanted to make sure that the entire surface was completely covered in the white spray paint. We do not want to see any of those sketchy colors coming through. We want a neutral backdrop for our lamp. Once everything was sufficiently coated in the white spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. Already, this lamp looks a thousand times better. It looks so classic and beautiful just by making that quick paint swap. Now we are gonna save one little piece from the original lamp, it's this little cylindrical metal thing. It's brass, but it's discolored, so we're going to paint it in the gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. Once it was completely covered in this gold spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. Now, if you haven't guessed already, we are going to be turning this lamp into a ginger jar. I was inspired by all of the gorgeous ginger jars that I saw online. But let me tell you, these ginger jars can get pretty pricey. 
And we did pay $15 for this lamp at the thrift store, which at the time I thought was pretty pricey. But compared to the ginger jars that we can find online, it's a deal. So that's the plan. We are gonna turn the lamp into a ginger jar. Now it's white, but I really wanted to add some embellishments. And so what I did was I got out my Cricut maker and I cut out some gold cherry blossoms and flowers. Now I'm going to add my gold branches at an angle on my lamp. So I press the vinyl to my lamp with my scraper tool. Because the surface of the lamp is curved, sometimes it's really hard to get the vinyl to lay flat. So what I do is I actually cut the transfer tape. I make little slits along the side and that way the vinyl will lay flat. And it's just a lot easier to do it this way. Once my vinyl is in place, I remove the transfer tape. I created several cherry blossom branches and flowers. I placed them around the circumference of my lamp. I had a variety of different sizes and shaped branches and flowers. I placed them evenly around the lamp so the entire outside was covered in these gorgeous gold cherry blossom branches and flowers. I love the detail of these gold cherry blossoms and flowers. It has taken it to the realm of high end. Now, of course, we can leave it just like this. It's so beautiful just with the white and the gold, but I wanna add some pops of color. So along with the gold cherry blossom branches, I had my Cricut Maker cut out different shades of blue flowers to go over the top of the gold flowers. I simply added the transfer tape to the flowers and then pressed them over the top of the gold flowers. I alternated the darker blue with the lighter cornflower blue so that they were intermixed nicely. This part was pretty time consuming, but trust me, it's so worth it because it looks so good. The minute I added the first one on there, I knew it was going to be a beautiful addition. And I was right, these multicolored flowers are simply stunning. The shades of blue elevated the look of this ginger jar. It looks custom, it looks expensive. And it's personalized to my taste because I happen to love a white, gold, and blue. So it's right up my alley. I took a step back and I thought it needs just a little bit more detail on the neck of the ginger jar and the base. So I simply had my Cricut Maker cut out some gold lines. I added one line of the gold vinyl along the bottom. I pressed it firmly to the base and then pulled it tightly around the circumference of the square base. Then I cut one more gold vinyl line and placed it on the neck of the ginger jar. I simply added it to the center of the neck, pulled it tightly, pressed it firmly to the ginger jar so that it would adhere well. These two lines were such a beautiful addition. It's just what this ginger jar needed. Now, of course, our ginger jar needs a knob at the top. About a month or so ago, I did a high-end dupe video where I recreated this gorgeous box. I used some floral knobs that I purchased at Hobby Lobby for that project. I bought an extra one at that point because I need a backup. Sometimes you just need a little bit of insurance. So we're gonna take that leftover knob and we are going to use it as a knob for our ginger jar. Now this is where that little cylindrical piece is gonna come in handy because it's going to add height and a little more detail to the top. I added hot glue to the lamp and then placed the cylindrical piece over the top. Then I added some hot glue to the top of this little cylindrical piece, grabbed my gold floral knob and pressed it to the glue on top of that cylindrical piece. This is such a pretty topper. Instead of using a circle, this flower is so much better. It ties in with all the beautiful flowers that we have around our ginger jar. It ties in the gold, but it also gives our ginger jar a unique flair. And now we are finished with our lamp turned ginger jar. You guys, look at this beautiful ginger jar. This is seriously one of my favorite projects that I have ever done. It looks stunning. It definitely looks like it came from one of those expensive websites that we looked at earlier. I don't think anybody would walk into my house and say, you know what? I think that looks like it's from the thrift store and that it started out as a lamp. There's absolutely no way. 
This is so professional. The flowers on it, oh my goodness. I love these different shades of blue. They coincide so beautifully with the gold branches, the gold topper, and these little accent lines around the top and the bottom. When I finished this, I took a picture and I sent it to Leslie and she was so surprised that it ended up to look so good. So I'm happy that she likes it. Now, you don't need to have a vinyl cutter to create a project like this. In fact, I did a little bit of research and I found some stickers on Amazon. You could get the exact same look with stickers. You could use a stencil. If you're really great at painting, you could hand paint some flowers or some branches onto a lamp like this. So if you wanna recreate this project, there are definitely ways you can do it in an affordable way without purchasing a vinyl cutter. Well, you guys, I think that this first mystery thrift flip transformation was a success. I love the way that it turned out. Our next thrift flip is actually gonna be one that I found. When I was rummaging up and down the aisles, I came across this black tray. I love the detailing around the edge. The size is great. The other thing that's fantastic is the price. It was only $2.99. Now, this tray is plastic, so just keep that in mind as we're going through. It's not a high quality, amazing tray, but it definitely is worth $2.99. Now, I am not going to be keeping this as a tray. We are going to turn it into something completely different. I think you guys will be surprised at the results. So the first thing we need to do is paint this tray. So I took it outside and I sprayed it in the gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that all the ornate details along the edge was completely covered in the paint. I also painted the center. Once everything was saturated in the gold paint, I let it dry for one hour. I came back, flipped the tray over, and painted the underside. Once again, I made sure that all of the ornate detailing along the edges and the bottom of the tray was completely saturated in the spray paint. And then I let it dry for one additional hour. Now that the paint is dry, we're going to add a little style to the center of the tray. And we are gonna do it with this gorgeous pink and gold scrapbook paper. I love the gold flowers and the pink is just so bright and cheerful. This paper is going to add elegance to the center of the tray. So we need to measure out the paper so it fits in there nicely. So I placed the paper in the center and then I got a ruler and a pencil and marked out the correct size. I grabbed my scissors and I cut out this rectangle. The edges are curved so I just cut the edges into the same curved shape. Now this piece fits perfectly inside the center of my tray. Next, I got out some Mod Podge and a sponge brush, and I added a liberal amount of this Mod Podge to the bottom of the tray. I made sure that the surface of the tray was completely coated in the Mod Podge. Then I took my scrapbook paper and I placed it over the top of the Mod Podge. I pressed it firmly to the tray. Then I got out my kitchen scraper and pressed out all the air bubbles that were trapped underneath. Doing this will ensure that that paper lays flat. Next, I added a top layer of Mod Podge. Again, I just painted on a liberal amount of this Mod Podge over the surface of the scrapbook paper. And don't worry if the Mod Podge gets on the sides a little bit on the sides isn't gonna make much of a difference because it dries clear. So feel free to add a decent amount. Once the surface was coated in the Mod Podge, I let it dry for two hours. Now we're gonna go on a little shopping trip to Hobby Lobby because I need a knob. And Hobby Lobby has a huge variety of knobs. They have an assortment of colors and sizes. I wanted a little bit of sparkle for this project. So I chose a crystal knob with a beautiful gold back plate. This knob is definitely the most expensive part of this project. It came in at a price of $6.99, which is still a great deal. We need to attach our knob to our tray, so we need to drill a hole into the tray. One trick that I love to do is I get a paint can lid and I place it under the item that I'm going to be drilling a hole into. It raises up the piece and makes space for the drill bit to go into. 
And of course, I'm using my Athena drill, which is the best drill. And I'm gonna drill that hole right through the center. Now I can take my crystal knob and poke it through this hole. I screwed on the nut that was on the back and now my knob is attached to the tray. So you may be wondering, well, what are we gonna hang from this crystal knob? Well, we're going to get a Dollar Tree terrarium and fill it up with some beautiful pink and white peonies. I took these stems of flowers and I bent the stem a couple of times because I need to fit them inside of the terrarium. I love the white and pink color combination. It goes with the pink scrapbook paper and it is also fresh and bright for this time of year. Now that my floral arrangement in my terrarium is done, we are going to hang it from the knob. I have this beautiful light pink satin ribbon. I threaded it through the eye hook that was on the top of the terrarium, then wrapped it around the knob on the tray and finally tied the ribbon into a beautiful bow. This is absolutely beautiful. You could do so many things in a terrarium like this. Of course, we're gonna do flowers. You could do succulents. You could do candles. The possibilities of what you can add in a terrarium and hang it from there are endless. And in fact, if you don't have a terrarium, you could use a mason jar. Just wrap that ribbon around the lid of the mason jar and hang it up on the knob. Now, I couldn't leave well enough alone. I wanted to add one more detail, and because the tray has that beautiful ornate detail all along the edge, all I did was I took some extra white peonies and I poked it through the openings at the top corner of the tray. And then I bent the stems at the back so that the flowers would stay in place. I love the addition of the flowers. It's an unexpected detail and it ties the flowers together. And here is our final flip. Look at how beautiful this is, you guys. You would never know that this started out as a tray. This is so unique and different. I'm going to take this and place it on top of a frame holder, but of course you could hang it on the wall. You could put it on a door. This would be so pretty for a party, a Mother's Day party, a brunch, a baby shower, a wedding shower. It would be a stunning tabletop accessory at any party. I love the crystal knob. That just adds that beautiful little touch of sparkle that this needs. I think that this tray came a long way from where we found it at the thrift store for $2.99. This is Natalie's mystery item. So let's open this up and see what it is. Let's see, what is this? It's a box. Let's see, let's open it. Oh, it's like a jewelry box. Oh, that's pretty. It's got a little key. This is velvety. That's kind of pretty. I don't know, this one's not bad. She was nice to me. We can use something fun with this. So let's, let's put our creative hats on and see what we can make. Natalie, you were very kind by challenging me with this jewelry box. It has a lot of potential, so let's take a closer look at it. Right now, it has this green velvet that has been worn. It's faded and it's lifting up on the corner. The inside is pretty filthy, you guys. There's some stains that look pretty questionable, but I love the gold latch and the size of the jewelry box is great. It's got a lot of positives, so let's beautify this jewelry box. The first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to remove the top of this jewelry box. It's lifting up anyways, so we're just gonna take it off. The lid is made out of cardboard. It's pretty flimsy, so it was really easy to pull off. We need an alternative for the velvet that we just pulled off, so we're gonna go on over to Home Goods. One of my favorite places to shop at Home Goods is the gift dial, the wrapping paper, the gift bags. I find magical things there every single time. And this time was no exception, I found a gift bag. It has pink flowers and shades of green that are perfect because it's gonna tie in with the green velvet that's already on the box. The best part is that this bag was only $5.99, plus it came with a gift card and white tissue paper. So that's a bonus. What we're gonna do with this bag is we are going to tear it apart. 
I ripped the bag at the seams and then pulled it apart all the way down the side. Then I pulled out the bottom part and now I can lay this gift bag out flat. Then I took the jewelry box lid and I placed it over the gift bag and then I got a pencil and traced it out. Next, I got my scissors and I cut out this rectangular shape. Because this gift bag is so beautiful and the inside of our jewelry box is in need of some help, what we're gonna do is cut some more rectangles out and put it in the little slots inside that jewelry box. So I got a ruler and a pencil and I measured out the correct size of rectangles that I needed and then I cut them all out. Now that my individual rectangles are cut out, I got some hot glue and then I pressed my gift bag rectangles into the hot glue. I repeated this process with all six rectangles. The additional detail on the inside of this jewelry box is simply beautiful. And it'll just be our secret that there are some ugly stains <laughs> that are underneath the paper. Shh, we don't need to tell anybody. It looks so pretty now, no one would ever know. Now I'm going to add the hot glue to the top of the box. I made sure that there was a lot of hot glue, especially on the edges because we want our paper to lay flat, but also be on there really firmly. So once I had a lot of hot glue on the top of the box, I grabbed my gift bag a rectangle and placed that in the hot glue and pressed it together so that it adheres well. One little designer trick that I like to do on a lot of my projects to elevate it is to add feet to the bottom. That little detail takes it just over the top. So we're gonna add some feet to our jewelry box. At Hobby Lobby, they had a package of six wooden knobs and it was only $1.49, which is a great deal and we only need to use four of them. So I took four of these knobs outside and I sprayed it in the gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that each of the knobs was sufficiently covered in the gold spray paint. Once everything had been saturated in the paint, I let it dry for one hour. I flipped my box over and I added some hot glue to the corner of the box. Then I placed the wood knob in the hot glue. I repeated this process on all four corners of my box. I added hot glue and then placed the knobs in the hot glue in each corner. Isn't this a pretty detail? I love the feet. It's so easy to do and very affordable. It adds a custom detail that makes your pieces look more expensive. The velvet along the top rim was looking a little sketchy to me too. It was discolored and it just, it didn't match. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover it up. But before we do that, we need to remove the latch. And believe it or not, that latch on the inside was coming off anyway, so it was probably a good thing that we took it off. I got my needle nose pliers and I bent the metal and just easily pulled off that top latch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same ribbon that we used to hang our terrarium, this beautiful pink satin ribbon. I loved it so much that I wanted to use it on this jewelry box. And it's gonna tie the pink from the gift bag flowers into the actual box itself. So what I did was I got some hot glue and I placed it along the rim of the top lid. Then I pressed my ribbon into the hot glue. Adding the ribbon to this part of the box ties in the pink from the flowers on the gift bag it also hides the discoloration and scuffs that were on the velvet part of this box. Once my ribbon had been sufficiently glued to the box, I grabbed the latch, I bent the metal part back inside so that it could lay flat, then I got hot glue and added it to the center of the ribbon and then pressed the latch into the glue to secure it back onto the box. And now we are completely done transforming our thrifted jewelry box. You guys, look how pretty this is. And when you open it up, let's open it back up. Look at this, look at how pretty that is inside. So, so gorgeous. It ties together, this ties together so nicely with the lid. It's just, it's a fun little surprise. When you open it up, you're like, oh, it was meant to go together. <laughs> so this, you guys, has made such a huge transformation from when we found it. I love the gold latch and the gold feet. That makes it look expensive and high end. And um, I love that we left some of the velvet on the bottom. The bottom velvet portion had minimal damage to it, so it was okay to leave it and just keep it as is. Now this jewelry box looks so pretty. 
it looks so expensive and custom and for only three dollars and 99 cents i think that we scored purchasing this so great job natalie good find i love the way that this looks it was a great thrift flip this was such a fun video, you guys. I love spending time with my friends. You can do the same. Grab a couple of your favorite people to be with and head to a thrift store and make a game out of it. Have them pick you out some challenge items and see if you can recreate them. I'm also glad that we could bring you along with us shopping. Hopefully you got some ideas or some inspiration today so you feel like you can do the exact same thing. Now we did play a fun little game on Natalie's channel. So once you're done watching mine, head on over and see what she did with her thrifted items and who won the game. I'll leave a link to Natalie's video in my description box so you can head over there and check that out. Well, I hope that you can see that you can live beautifully and you can do it on a budget. You can get some beautiful pieces of custom home decor by putting in a little bit of thought and time into creating these pieces. If you like this video and want to see more like it, I would love to have you subscribe so I can share those with you. Thank you so much for watching.